In this video, we're going to be looking at an introduction to the basic tools of Illustrator. But before we start, um, there's one thing we have to understand about Illustrator, as opposed to, for example, Photoshop. The file formats uh, for Photoshop are based on pixels, or raster graphics, or bitmap images, which are dot matrix data structures representing a general rectangular grid of pixels or points of color. Vector files, on the other hand, are formats created using mathematical definitions to produce smooth paths. They can be scaled in size without any loss of quality. This is not true for raster graphics or bitmap images. When we zoom into the edge of a raster image, we can actually see the individual pixels showing how resolution just drops away um, when you enlarge a low resolution bitmap or raster image. Here's the vector image and what we can see is a discernible difference in terms of the quality of the edge. Nothing drops away in terms of quality. You can scale this up a few meters or down to a few millimeters and the resolution will remain the same. Let's begin our little investigation of the basic tools in Illustrator. Let's commence by creating a new file. Go to File, New, and depending on which version of Illustrator you're using, um, select Print, and we're going to go with A3 vertical format. We need to cover some basic concepts in Illustrator, and um, starting with most important of all to, to actually comprehend in order to get your head around Illustrator is knowing what the stroke and fill is all about. I'm just, going to, I'm just going to drag the um, the left palette and the right palette just a little closer so you can see um, how these two things um, engage with objects. So the palette on the left you can use to create an object, a shape, a line, a form, and the palette on the right you use um, to modify. Let's just create a little rectangle to see what the stroke and fill do. Uh, I'm going to just drag a, um, a square by holding the shift key having first selected the rectangle tool and um, the first thing you'll notice is that when I click off it by holding down the command key is that we have a black line and a white fill. Um, now that corresponds exactly to what's happening in, in this little area here called the stroke and the fill and we can change these colors simply by going to our swatches and I'm just going to drag the swatch out of the uh, the right palette and um, essentially when we select the object we can then modify the colors so the fill this white square is on top therefore I can now modify that white to say a red or I can if I click on the stroke and put that on top I can now modify the stroke by going maybe give it a green and you can't quite see it um, because it's a very fine line in fact you can find out just uh, how thick that line is by going to the top left of the menu and reading stroke one point or you can go to this tool here stroke and find out that it's one point you can make that thicker so you can make that as thick as you like and also you can go into um, under a point as well alrighty so stroke and fill um, basically the contour the, the contour line on the edge of a shape and the fill being the interior of that shape. Why don't you now pause the video and have a go with um, a rectangle or a square and play around with changing the colors of the stroke and the fill. Now that we know what stroke and fill is all about, let's start making some shapes using the pen tool. The pen tool is in the left palette and if you hold down your, your mouse you'll note that there are four individual tools. We're going to use the first. 
Let's make some straight lines. Making first you selected the, the pen tool. Then just clicking, moving your mouse somewhere else, clicking again, moving, clicking, moving, clicking. You'll notice that these lines, uh, blue lines up here, which are the vectors. And the vectors have been, or the stroke, or the path. They're synonyms for the same thing. What you'll note is the, um, the vector has um, the same weight as the rectangle that we created just earlier. By clicking and moving, clicking and moving the mouse, you get this zigzag line. Um, now what's important is when you draw uh, with the end tool, um, you really kind of need to um, omit the fill because you get this kind of discrepancies happening across your drawing. So all you want to really see is, your, is the line or the stroke. So we need to knock out the fill. And the fill is knocked out simply by going to this little uh, square here, none, which is, uh, gives a, shows a diagonal line. Well, by clicking on that, you omit the fill. And you can bring the fill back at any time later. So we have, uh, we have created uh, for ourselves um, a zigzag line. Um, now, to get out of um, that tool, you can either hit Escape, um, but it also what you can do is hold the command key and the command key basically um, allows you to move into one of these two tools at the very top, the selection tools, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, so we have our, our zigzag, straight lines, rectilinear lines, and um, now let's try some curvilinear. So we go click and drag this time. By clicking and dragging, you, you notice there are these little kind of moustaches, these handles, and this thing in the middle is the anchor. Um, so we are creating a set of anchors and handles. Um, the distance in which you pull out the handle um, determines how curvy that line's gonna be. So, um, you can see there's a quite distinct difference between the top line and, the, and this bottom line. Again, hit escape on your keyboard and um, pause and have a go. We've got our head round um, stroke and fill and we know now something about making lines. Um, let's move on to making shapes. With our pen tool, we will just do what we were doing earlier. This time I'll do a combination of straight lines and, and curved lines. And the most important thing for you to understand in making a shape is this last move. So we're going to finish exactly where we started. So we, when we hit the initial anchor we made, um, a little circle will come at the bottom right corner of the pen icon. We click that. As soon as you do that, what actually happens is you've, you've locked in the line and you've created a continuous line and therefore a shape. And um, there are a couple of corrections one must do in order for this to be a kind of a clean shape. But anyway, this will do for now. While it's been selected, you can, um, and making sure that your fill is on top of the stroke, you can go to your swatches and make a selection of color. Down here, these double arrows allow you to flip between um, the stroke and the fill. So you can alternate the, uh, between the two using the same colors. Alrighty. So, um, why don't you have a go at that? Now let's move on to the selection tools. We have two. We have the direct selection tool and the selection tool proper. So with the selection tool, once it's selected, you can select an object and then move that around. Take it wherever you need to take it. The um, direct selection tool allows you to modify the, um, the shape you've created, 
Now to use the direct selection tool, the white arrow, we deselect, then reselect by clicking off the object, then clicking back on to an anchor. We can move the anchor around to wherever we want to. We can stretch the handles and this will modify the, the line. It's a good time now to be introduced to one more tool, the anchor point tool. This tool allows us to convert rectilinear lines to curvilinear lines and vice versa. Just by clicking on an anchor, um, we can convert that anchor from being a curved line to a straight line. And of course, uh, a straight line to a curved line. And we make the curved lines by clicking and dragging. You have a go now. Let's have a look at Pathfinder. One of the main ways of combining simple shapes to make more complex shapes. Let's begin with maybe a rectangle. And um, in this rectangle, let's imagine this to be a house. We may want to knock back the stroke, maybe make the two, uh, the stroke and the fill a bit more distinct. Let's have a look. Let's go maybe red. Okay. Now, we've got our rectangle, and um, to our rectangle, let's add a triangle. So for a triangle, let's go to the Polygon tool, and just select it, and then just click on the artboard, and you can have, you can choose any number of, of, um, of sides. Okay, and uh, it isn't quite the right size for us, it really doesn't matter. We're just going to um, uh, make this a little larger. Make sure the shapes slightly overlap. We have a triangle, we have a square. What we want to do though is combine these two shapes into one unified shape. So we're going to use Pathfinder. So while we have both shapes selected, we can go to Window and select Pathfinder. And Pathfinder has a range of uh, tools. And what this enables you to do is to do a variety of things such as unite two shapes or more together, subtract the front from the back, and a lot more other things. Okay, so what we're going to do with these two shapes is to combine them. So it's the first um, little tool, the unite tool. And now we have from two shapes, the rectangle and the triangle, we now have um, this kind of house form. Um, we may want to remove those pointy corners. The easiest way to do this is to go to the stroke tool and to um, select this middle band around cap and around corner. And once we click off, you can see how it's been softened. Alrighty, so um, why don't we punch a hole for windows and doors? So we need one more rectangle, and um, note that I haven't really worried about making this um, shape exactly the size of a door. In fact, what's going to happen is um, the part of this rectangle that overlaps with the house shape, that will be punched out. It'll be like a hole put through it. So we select again both, and we go to Pathfinder. This time we're gonna to go to the second tool, minus the front from the back. So whatever shape is in the front, it will be subtracted uh, from the back. And there we have it. Now we have our, our new shape plus a door. So why don't you have a go um, at the Unite and Subtract tools.